And you know what foods do? They, they're memories. It's not just food that you eat. That voice should sound familiar to you if you listen to the trailer for the podcast. If you didn't listen, it's my Auntie Kay. She was the catalyst for this project. It was this comment and the story of picking wild cranberries she shared, and I recorded surreptitiously, during a summer visit that made me realize we all have stories like this that need to be documented and preserved. Stories that tell our history and connect us to our heritage. Stories rich in culture. It's a short story, but one that's filled with memories of family, childhood, and experiences that shaped a life. And I do have her permission to use the recording to share with all of you. We had wild cranberries all the while we lived on the farm. Then my mom would make a cranberry sauce, which was like the thick applesauce. And we would eat it with thick farm cream, not, not sweetened, just thick farm cream. Welcome to the Heritage Cookbook Project podcast, where we document and preserve heritage by connecting with cooks across the country who share food memories, family recipes, and a little bit about themselves. And I'm your host, Leigh Olson. We lived on a farm that was in northern Minnesota, and it bordered Canada and North Dakota. And very, really kind of desolate. There was a lot of swamp lands, and in those swamps were wild cranberries. And we had this neighbor lady across the road from us that came over one day and asked my mom if she wanted to go pick wild cranberries. I was always a little bit afraid of her because she was quite gruff, and my mom didn't drive. So we went with Cecilia. We went to this marshland, and it was desolate. There were shrubs and trees on both sides of the road, and it was a little country road. And as we're going in, she said, hmm, better mark our way so we don't get lost. So she tears her apron into little pieces and ties them on branches. And we continue on picking cranberries. I have no idea how long we were there, but we could not find our way out of there. We couldn't find her apron strings. We couldn't see anything. And I remember my mom being a little nervous, and I was scared to death. I can still feel how scared I was to think that we were in the middle of this woods and you couldn't see anything. You looked straight up and you could see the sky, but you couldn't see anything else. So there were no buildings around us. There was no farm. There was nothing, both on our side of the road and on the other side of the road. Um, it was just a little two-lane dirt road. So thank heaven there were power lines, which is interesting, too, because we lived on the farm Two years before we had power, they were just the old-fashioned posts with a wire that hung across from post to post. We found our car and got home, and I remember my dad being quite upset because he knew we were going picking, but he had no idea how long it would take and how long we'd be gone. So anyway, that was the beginning of picking wild cranberries. Dad probably went with us a couple times, and we never veered very far off the road. After the break, treasured wherever kitchen utensils, fresh chicken dinners, and blood sausage. This episode of the Heritage Cookbook Project podcast is supported by Bob's Red Mill. When you're making those treasured family recipes, don't leave the quality of your ingredients to chance. Visit bobsredmill.com to find out more about this employee-owned company, their products, and how you can fill your pantry with them. With their products, not their employees. Many years ago, my grandfather bought a whole set of wherever, kettles and pie pans and cake pans and cookie pans and roasters for my grandma. And I'm thinking back on it. They must have been really expensive. And she got everything. I have some of the pieces. But the piece I cherish the most is the colander, um, shaped like a cone with a wooden paddle in it. After we simmered the cranberries, Mother would put the cranberries in this colander, and we would squeeze out all the pulp, and that would be our cranberry sauce. She'd add a little bit of sugar. Uh, None of us liked it really sweet. Living on the farm, we had lots of cream, and we would eat it with thick farm cream, not sweetened, just thick farm cream. But it's a memory of my mom. It's a memory of growing up. 
I think about those years on the farm. You know, we had no running water, and our house was always spotless. Clothes were always spotless. Mother cooked everything from scratch, and we made our own butter. Mom made bread every week. We had a lot of company on the farm because we were the only one on my dad's side of the family that lived on the farm. So all these cousins would come out to the farm. And Mom would go to the wood pile and chop a head off a chicken and put it in hot water and pick all the feathers off so we would have fresh chicken for dinner. And then she made blood sausage. You know, that that seems so primitive, but, but those were farm things. And, you know, when you have all those animals and you don't have a lot of money, you use everything you have to make food for your family. We had a lot of really good food. You know, it just warms my heart every time I think about it. I hope that you enjoyed listening to Auntie Kay's story about her memories of life on the farm. And if you want to hear more stories like this, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. The full recipe for cranberry sauce can be found at theheritagecookbookproject.com. And don't forget to register for access to the printable cookbook pages. Cheers. The Heritage Cookbook Project podcast was produced and edited by me. I'm Leigh Olson. Sound design and mixing also by me. Sound effects credit for this episode goes to Dubroid for Marcia's.